On the 16th of October this year, China's governing Chinese Communist Party, the CCP, will begin its 20th Party Congress. Now, this is a once-in-five-year exercise when there is endorsement as well as review of the party and government's work and charting the way ahead. But once every 10 years, the Party Congress meets to elect a new leadership. And that's been the case since 1987, when Deng Xiaoping became the leader of the Communist Party and the President of the People's Republic of China. But this year's Party Congress is going to be different. There will not be a change of leadership. Instead, there will be an endorsement of Xi Jinping's rule, and the Supreme Leader of China is expected to secure an unprecedented third term. Now, most Party Congresses last about a week or so typically, and so it will be this year. The current Congress completes its five-year term. More than 2,000 members of the Party Congress will take part in the selection of new blood for the party's Central Committee. The Central Committee has more than 200 full-time members and about 170 alternate members. Together, these 350-plus members will decide the future leaders of China. Some of the Central Committee members will be promoted to the 25-member Politburo. There will also be likely some new faces in the seven-member Politburo Standing Committee, or the PSC, which is the party's most powerful organ, the highest decision-making body within the Chinese Communist Party. So the question is, who is going to make the cut and who will not? Is a third term guaranteed for Xi Jinping? Where does this leave him in the pantheon of Chinese leaders since Mao Zedong? What changes can we expect in the Politburo Standing Committee? And perhaps the most important question, will China get a new premier? Because Li Keqiang may be on his way out. Now, when we talk about succession in the Politburo Standing Committee, we should not conflate and treat all the candidates the same, but separate them into three groups because they enjoy different levels of privileges. Sitting Politburo Standing Committee members enjoy more privileges than who are aspiring candidates from the outside because of the Standing Committee rules. A Standing Committee member enjoys extendable tenure unless he or she, and in this current case, there are no women in the Politburo Standing Committee, so if he gets unseated either through disciplinary procedure or voluntarily retires, or, has, as has happened most often in the last few decades, the candidate is above the cutoff age of 67. Now, going above the age limit is currently the only operating mechanism that regulates the exits of senior members of the Communist Party. Hence, it's very valuable to keep it alive for the operation of the party to avoid a, some kind of a geriatric leadership. All sitting PSC members above the age of 67 at the time of the election are forced to retire. All those who are at 67 or below will stay, and there's been no exception to this over the last 30 years. There are cases where age-qualified Politburo members have failed to retain their seats, but that is an aberration, and that doesn't necessarily contradict the age limit rule, because they don't have the privilege of Politburo Standing Committee members, and age is not the only factor that regulates the exits of these members. Consent engineering. This is what happens at the voting sites, and it's perhaps the more impactful measures, but least ensure predictable outcomes at the Party Congress. Now, the Standing Committee of the Chairman League of Party Congress, which is SCOCL, that is the official collective body which approves the nominations of Central Committee members. The SCOCL has about 40 members, but it's not a fixed size. Regular members of this group are comprised of sitting members of the Politburo, the Politburo Standing Committee, and the Central Secretariat. Since 2002, all living, retired, and not purged Standing Committee members have also been part of the SCOCL. Now, this mechanism of allowing retiring as well as retired Politburo Standing Committee members to have a say in the selection of future leaders is perhaps the secret sauce behind the peaceful power succession that we have seen widely over the last 30 to 40 years, from Deng Xiaoping to Jiang Zemin to Hu Jintao, and now to Xi Jinping.
At this year's party congress, a lot of attention will be on whether Xi Jinping will fill the lineup of top officials with loyalists. The most critical question is, will he find a potential successor? Now, since removing the presidential term limits back in 2018, which were two terms, just like it is for American presidents, experts say that Xi Jinping has continued to focus on preparing for this unprecedented third term. His past two predecessors, Hu Jintao and Jiang Zemin, had both stepped down after serving two five-year terms. Since becoming the General Secretary of the CCP 10 years ago, Xi Jinping has dramatically changed China's political landscape. From the perspective of the power struggle, Xi Jinping remains quite successful. He's launched an anti-corruption campaign which he used to install his own people and to remove political opponents. The most famous case was that of Bo Xi Lai, who was once upon a time a rising star in the Communist Party, but he got purged by Xi very early into his first term, so that Bo would never become a threat to Xi. But it's not just Bo Xi Lai. The all-powerful internal security chief, Zhou Yongkang, was also purged. So was Ling Ji Hua, who was a close advisor to Xi's predecessor, Hu Jintao. Xi has also not spared the army. He went after Guo Bo Xing, as well as Xu Tsai Ho, both vice chairman of the Central Military Commission, the apex body that controls the Chinese People's Liberation Army. Ever since Xi Jinping abolished the presidential term limit in 2018, he has turned the Chinese Communist Party from a collective dictatorship to a personal dictatorship. Several members of uh, the PSC are expected to step down based on the age limit after the 20th Party Congress. If Xi Jinping decides to uphold the current age limit, then at least two current and serving PSC members will have to retire this fall. But the rest of the current members could remain on the council because they haven't hit the age limit yet. Now, regardless of the extent to which the age limit is held or set aside or changed, the new standing committee needs to bring in at least one or two younger members who can continue to sit in the PSC through to 2027 so as to allow a staggered leadership transition in 2027. Now, one important question is, who might be the next premier of China? In March, the current Chinese premier, Li Keqiang, announced that he would be stepping down within a year. However, in recent months, because of China's poor economic performance, as well as high youth unemployment rate, Li has been much more active in leading efforts to tackle both economic as well as social problems. There was a lot of speculation back in the summer as to whether Li was actually preparing to mount a challenge to Xi Jinping in the party congress. That speculation, though, does not match with the real situation in China. There's economic issues, there's the pandemic, of course, agricultural problems and drought. All of this come under the jurisdiction of the State Council of China, which makes Li and his active public appearance very normal because the State Council operates under the Premier. Now, some experts have also pointed to the current Vice Premier, Hu Chunhua, as well as Wang Yang, the Chairman of the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference National Committee, as possible candidates to be the next Premier of China. Now, the criteria to choose the next Chinese Premier is dictated by Xi Jinping's preference. And of course, political loyalty will be a key criterion. In recent months, China has been plagued by slower economic growth. In fact, GDP growth for the first half of 2022 has dropped to 2.5%. That's the lowest in 40 years. And it is lower than the annual target of 5.5%. In fact, lower by half. It comes after months of strict lockdown, uh, both in the biggest cities, Shanghai and Beijing. Earlier this, this year, there was massive lockdowns in both of these economic powerhouses. Additionally, youth unemployment rates reached a staggering 20% in the month of July. That is, again, the highest since Chinese authorities started releasing jobless figures from 2018. Internationally, too, the tensions between China and the United States have intensified since China staged a series of military exercises around Taiwan. Of course, China's justification and its provocation was the US House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's visit to Taiwan last month. It is in this backdrop of a challenging internal as well as external environment that Xi Jinping will be trying to stamp his place in Communist Party history.